It's a pleasure to be able to introduce Roy today. Uh, I've known him for about three years now, I think, and I've been continually impressed with all the things that he's done. I've got a, about a page of things which I am going to somewhat read from, because if I don't, I'm sure to lose out and forget something important. Um, Roy is a well-known music technology entrepreneur. He's been uh, leading industry innovations for over 20 years. He's the founder and CEO of Broadjam, as you can see. Uh, Broadjam is a music social network. Uh, it provides the most comprehensive search tools for finding, buying, and sharing music on the web with impressive collection of over 500,000 original songs from more than 130,000 artists. Uh, all of those from 190 companies, uh, sorry, countries. Um, Brajam is known for its music friend, musician friendly services, including social networking, website hosting, charts, artist profiles, reviews, contests, uh, transmit mechanisms, and download sales, as well as being recognized as a leader in music licensing. Um, we'll hear about some of this uh, as he speaks. Um, this is really interesting. Uh, before founding Broadjam, uh, Roy was the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Sonic Foundry, a name I think many of you may find familiar. Uh, and he was uh, also in several positions at director level within Sonic Corporation. Uh, this is really interesting. He uh, has contacts, more than 5,000 contacts in the music industry. So if you're a musician, budding musician, this is the guy to talk to. Uh, his uh, past or present clients include uh, and I'm going to rattle off a long list here. Academy of Country Music, Country Radio Broadcasters, Warner Chappell, Yamaha, DJ Jazzy Jeff, The Beach Boys, Allman Brothers, Boys to Men, Joe Walsh, John Anderson, Skid Row, Randy Jackson, Will Smith, and many more. Um, so he's a songwriter. Uh, he thoroughly understands the musician's world. Uh, so with that, Roy, please uh, come on up and uh, give us a few Thank insights. You. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. You know, when um, Alan said to send over that bio, every time I write it, it gets a little better. So it improves. Next time you see it, I'm sure it'll, uh, I'll have discovered the Beatles and, uh, and played in the band as well. So um, don't I wish. Um, so let's, let's get going here. Let's, uh, how do I get, there we go. Let's start here. So I, before I get into describing the company, I want to give you a little brief intro to it, and then I'm going to talk, I've been asked to talk a little about my background, um, uh, how I think about things uh, from a web perspective in the music industry as well, and then really what the focus of this is, is the analytics and, and how we crunch numbers at Broadjam. So hopefully uh, I can deliver all that in the time frame allotted. So as um, Alan said, he gave you a little background, and I've been asked to elaborate on my resume a little, so rather than stand up here and talk about all those great things you heard, I'm going to give you the real resume now, okay? So just keep your eye on the screen. This is how it goes. <laughs> the last one hasn't quite happened yet. But if the second to the last one happens, how I hope, I will be doing a, a Caribbean boat captain shortly. But uh, it, my career is very simple. I started out as a starving musician and somehow ended up in the technology space years ago in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, working for Amarillo Music. And I uh, fell in love with the technology. I, I always fiddled with synthesizers and sampling keyboards. And what I didn't know at the time is a lot of the stuff that we were playing around with was very pioneering in the space. And I was recruited uh, a few years later to, uh, to work with a startup called Insonic in Philadelphia. And they were really one of the pioneers in sampling technology. And that technology is the ability to record a sound and play it back on a keyboard. And boy, we did. We recorded thousands and hundreds of thousands of sounds. And I still hear some of them on the radio today. You know, we would record, you know, spoons hitting glasses and we'd turn it into something else. And it was fascinating. At that time, we didn't know we were innovating anything. We didn't know we were inventing an industry, but we were just having fun and a bunch of guys that, are, that were just trying to, uh, trying to make some music um, with some great gear that, that we were developing as well. 
I was recruited uh, after years with them uh, in the mid 90s. Uh, I was recruited by Sonic Foundry to come out and uh, help get that business going. And we had a great run there. And many of you, I'm sure, have heard of Sonic Foundry. And hopefully you sold when the stock was on the way up. Um, I didn't hear a lot of uh, applause to that one, so <laughs> apparently you didn't. Uh, but uh, it's a great company and it's still growing, going strong. And, um, and I left there at the end of 99 and started Broad Jam. I, uh, uh, I'm a songwriter who loves technology, and I thought uh, if I'm going to stay in the music business and, and stay in Madison, which I love, um, I'm going to have to develop uh, my own business. So now I've talked a little about my background. I want to give you a little of my education. So I have three older brothers. Anybody have older brothers here? You know what I'm talking about. You don't need to go to college to learn how to negotiate or learn how to get food. Uh, get seconds first, you, as, as the youngest of four boys, you learn. I spent three years in college. It was my freshman year all three times. <laughs> um, and, but most importantly, the last one, I married up. So, uh, so now that I've established my credibility with you all, this is going to be fun. Um, so what I'd like to do is just uh, tell you a little about what Broad Jam does. Alan touched on it uh, for a minute. Uh, we have 130,000 musicians, songwriter members of Broad Jam from 190 countries that have uploaded nearly 600,000 songs to us. Every imaginable genre uh, you can think of. Um, and I'll talk a little more specifically in a minute about what we do with that content. We provide profile pages, um, web hosting, social networking. Recently we just launched a Broad Jam in every city in the world, so there's regional Broad Jams all over the world now. So if you want to go to Lagos, Nigeria, and see all of our members and just work on that website uh, or on that web portal, uh, you can do that. Uh, lots of song contests. At any given time, we have 150 songwriting contests going on on the site. Um, it creates a lot of collaboration and a lot of um, goodwill amongst the members. Um, we have pro reviewers from the industry, uh, some famous people from the industry that come in and review the music of our members. But the most important mission of our company is we distribute that content to film companies, to TV companies, advertisers. For example, you might have heard uh, recently in the last few years uh, the Quick Trip ad that is, um, it's making it fresh is the, the kind of the hook. And I'm sure you would recognize it if you've heard it because they run it about every 30 seconds on every station, I think. This was a 52-year-old nurse from Philadelphia who won that uh, competition on our site. Quick Trip came to us. and. They wanted an ad and they post, They were, wanted a jingle for their radio commercials. We posted it on our site and within a couple weeks they had 40 custom jingles to, to choose from. Uh, they paid $3,000 for that. And one of my favorite stories of the company is I got home on a Saturday night and, well, early, like I, it used to be, I get home late on Saturday nights, but now it's early. Uh, and uh, my phone rang about midnight. And uh, it was this lady from Philadelphia. She was a nurse, just got off her second shift, and she just got a check for $3,000. And she told me, she said, you know, I've been writing song 25, uh, songs for 25 years, and I've never been paid until tonight. And I'm sorry to bother you at home, but I had to call you and tell you. And that's exactly uh, why I started this company, is uh, for people like Liz Miller, who are working really hard, who love songwriting, who, um, who want an opportunity. Um, and so we, we've placed music in video game companies. There's a company called Konami who makes Dance Dance, Dance, Dance Revolution, which is that the squares on the floor light up, and we supplied music to, uh, for them uh, for years. But lots of destinations of the content. In fact, here's a much better chart um, of who we work with. We've placed music with just, well, with all of these folks and a lot more. This chart, or this graphic is probably a year or so old now. Uh, lots of commercials going into a commercial, coming out of a commercial, uh, lots of background music in film and TV. Uh, some, one of our most recent successes was this movie. Anybody see this movie, Dinner for Schmucks? Um, what a great movie um, with Steve Carell. Uh, we got a call on a Friday night, and the director was looking for a flamenco guitar with a Portuguese singer over the top. And yeah, we got that, sure, you know. Well, what I didn't know is we did have that. We actually had 20 ver different versions of something like that. We posted it on our website to our members to submit, and that's how it usually works. We post it, our members read through our website daily, they submit their music. By Sunday morning, 
I had 20 different versions of a flamenco guitar with a Portuguese singer. And to be quite honest, I was pretty blown away. I didn't think there were even that many versions possible. Uh, they, put, they tested the music, they, they signed the contract, and Sunday put it in the film on Tuesday and shipped it. It was in the theater showing the following Friday. So if you think uh, Hollywood is sometimes is uh, uh, really thought out and well in advance of things, uh, uh, that isn't the case. Uh, my guess is what probably happened is they couldn't get the contract for a song they already had, so they called us and we fulfilled it for them. So we do a lot more for them now. Another example is the TV show Bones. Uh, we got a call, and I can't remember exactly how it went, but it was something like this. The uh, music supervisor uh, wanted a song that he said, take the loudest guitar amp you can find and put it in the smallest closet and hire a chainsaw to sing lead. That's what we need. The scene is a, a club, a death metal club, and um, we need a, a raunchy band. <laughs> and so we found, we got that band for them. And the, the very next night, it was or t like two nights later, was in the show. And they loved the band so much and the promo kit so much, they actually hired, the band looked so much like the part they wanted the band in the show to play, they hired them to be in the show as well. So it was, uh, so that's, that's the kind of stuff we do. It's a lot of fun. Um, so, you know, and although the company is about music and we're all passionate about music, and obviously many of us that, many entrepreneurs who start companies, it really is never about money. It's about uh, what you love to do. And, but you still have to have a basis for growth. And many of you have probably uh, uh, have the same ideas, but there's really three key growth, growth things that I think about for our company. One is, I have to increase the number of customers. That's key to any business. Two, uh, increase the frequency of the purchases. And three, increase the number of items sold. It's that simple. If you do all three of those all the time, your company is gonna grow. I say that and sometimes we don't grow and we have to work on this. But basically, everything, what I'm gonna talk about today is just around uh, these concepts. This is nothing new. This isn't my concept. I think I learned this in one of the classes that I actually went to in college years ago. Uh, that's humor, by the way. I'll just tell you when I tell a joke, and then it'll be easier for both of us, OK? Uh, thank you for those who are. Thanks, Mom. Uh, 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 so, but the point is, is that if you just think about it in a very simplistic form, you can get through, you, you can get through difficult problems by going back to something like this. So before I get into the numbers and crunch the numbers and um, uh, I'd like to give you a little framework of how I think about some of the aspects of the company. First of all, from a development perspective, there's one key rule that I've lived by since my very first boss told me this years ago. Products are not late or early. They're good or bad. So if you're developing a product, if you have to wait a week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks to get it right, then wait that long to get it right. Um, in the music business, we don't put out a song if the guitar player didn't show up. We wait to, or if, if he's out of tune. Well, some bands do. <laughs> we can't do much with their music, by the way, but um, the, the, the point is, is that you gotta get it right. Customers don't remember if you got it on, if you were on time. They re is it good or bad? And you take the extra time to get it right. Now, with that said, you have to think about, um, uh, you can't be delayed six months because you have time frames and bills to pay and, and things like that. So. The, the second part of it is, I think one of the reasons that we've been able to survive when virtually, you know, every one of our competitors that were around in 1999, in fact, I don't even know of another one that's still around that was there when we started. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad, but uh, we've somehow made it through. We really understand technology and, how to, and we know how to utilize it. Obviously, when, the, when cloud computing was developed a few years back, we were there, one of the first ones there. Uh, if you're are going, if you are going to start a business, make sure you move to the cloud right away or a really good low-cost hosting center. It's so much cheaper. Um, one other key thing as well, anybody who has a company is going to have to have a website. And what I see so often with websites, especially the musician sites, that are uh, somebody will send me a link to their brand new website and there will be a serpent that comes out of the water and, and it swallows a guitar and it spits it out and there's musical notes and a boat comes across and plays music. And then 25 seconds later, the website loads. 80% of your customers are gone in five seconds. So let's think about the top 100 sites in the world. What do they all have in common? 
they are all white. They are all white. There's a few that aren't. But they all have what's called an F-frame, all the, all the contents on the left side and, or across the top of the page. And there's a reason why, why you want to do that. Just like, you know, you wouldn't want somebody, you want somebody to come to your site and be comfortable when they arrive there. Why reinvent the wheel? Over the years, that has changed. When we started, Flash wasn't even being used on websites. Then Flash started being used, and everybody had colorful sites, but a few companies got it right. And, and that, just when we moved to, the, to this type of design about five years ago, we immediately saw our traffic go up because our customers were comfortable with our website. Uh, before they even got there. Flat architecture, if you can't, if you can't get to a feature in two button pushes, uh, then it's, one, it's not uh, worth it, it's not worth it to develop, or you need to bring it to the top of the, uh, uh, the front of the uh, site. Make sure it's as flat as it possibly can get. If you gotta get to a feature with three or four button pushes, it's certainly, um, it's, it's not a good, it's, it's, it's not effective. Um, and this is what we're going to talk about in a little more detail in just a second, the links. Many of you who've, who understand SEO and uh, social network optimization, we're going to talk more about social um, uh, SEO rather than uh, uh, network opt optimization. Uh, the key driver of traffic on the web is the number of links that you have coming to your website. Many of you probably know this, and I'm sure certain Tim Gill probably talked about this, um, uh, last month, because he is an absolute expert in this kind of stuff. Uh, but the more links you have coming in the website, more, the more significant your website is in the search engines. So when somebody, in our case, types in music licensing, they see thousands and thousands of links coming to broad gyms, and many of them have music licensing attached or embedded in them, uh, and that gives us more significance. Now, how do you get those links? Is there's a couple, couple ways to do it. In our case, we have user-generated and evolving content. So I don't care what industry you're in, you have customers, get them talking on your site, give them the ability to post their content on other sites because that drives more traffic to your site because Google says this is really more significant now. Now, another trick to search engine optimization is you create thousands and thousands of websites and then you post all of the links all over there. So you have hotelsinantarctica.com and you post all your links up there and Google uh, indexes those and they, they send, uh, uh, they said, well, here's another link to this. This is not a trick unique to us. In fact, we don't do it that much, but there are, that's, a, that's an SEO trick, just to create thousands and thousands of sites with these links posted back to your site. But Google also looks at the significance of the sending site as well. I'm not going to get into all the variables. There's probably about 200 variables that Google uh, looks at when they're determining search engine significance. Uh, but incoming links is about three quarters of that uh, determination. So um, that, this is kind of how we think about things. So what I'd like to do is just jump into um, a, a spreadsheet here and, and talk about one of the link, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to see here. Um, we, a few months ago, we decided to go after a whole bunch of new keywords. And, and really try to establish ourselves a little more. And, it, and if you do this right, it's not that difficult to really position your company uh, uh, with Google or with Bing or one of the search engines in a much higher light than you were uh, prior. So a few months back, we just started a new campaign with about 500 new keywords that we're going after. I don't even know how many thousands we, we go after now. We have a person who does this full time for us. So in the left-hand column here, you can see uh, that these are a lot of the keywords that we're pursuing. Um, we've been number two in this one. We've been pursuing this one for a few years now, so we're, we're, we've, we're doing quite well. So all these different keywords uh, relevant to our music. We break them off into categories. So if I just wanted to look at, uh, let's say, licensing, for example, just to see, just to look at how we're doing. Uh, for all the licensing keywords we're seeking. When, we, when I scroll down this list, this column here, this is telling me how many searches last month there were on Google for this particular keyword, and you can look these up. Uh, so obviously, we wanna, we wanna be in the top 10 with these, where the keywords have a lot of searches, a lot of people searching, and we have just made it in a couple of them. Uh, 
So as we scroll right a little, you'll see, we'll see where we were on just January 31st this year with the, let me, let me get back to, um, uh, we'll go back here. So on January 3rd, oops, Sarah, I'm sorry, uh, human error here. Every once in a while that slips out. Um, so we had about, uh, of these new words that we're pursuing, we had two in the top 10 in Google, uh, one in nine. Uh, Google serves pages 10 at a time uh, on January 31st. So after some slick work, we had the next week, we had 21. And then, then it dropped back a little, and this is when I call the SEO guy in the office and say, what happened there? This, we're supposed to be going the other way here. And then he gives me some long explanation that I have no idea what the hell he's talking about, but I, I trust him and believe him. So as we move forward, we're, we're real, our significance is getting uh, greater and greater with the search engine in just a, a couple of months. And that's because we're posting every place we can on all the social networks we belong to. There are 180 social networks that have over a million visitors a month. And we all focus on one. But you start creating accounts on all of these other ones that have real significance uh, and, and drive your traffic back to your website that really helps your search engine optimization. Um, so let's see where we are now. I think as of uh, yesterday, we had, um, and this just started, uh, like I said, two and a half months, three months ago, 33 of our key words in, in the, uh, or 32, I should say, in the top 10 results. 97% uh, of all searchers do not go to page two. So if you're not on page one, it, so you, you have to get to page one. So now, what we also monitor is where are we with our other search words? So we have, in just a few months, 87 keywords in the top 20. Well, we know many of those are gonna be in the top 10 here shortly. What am I seeing in traffic? I, I, I don't know if we can directly uh, uh, correlate this. I mean, we certainly could figure it out, but our traffic has almost doubled in six months since we, we uh, set out on this new initiative. So I, I can't stress enough if the only thing you do with your website is make it white, put your, your, uh, uh, your, your categories on the left-hand side or your titles, and maybe keep it very slim on the top of the page. Look at the top sites, follow their lead. So when somebody comes to your site, they, they're comfortable. The second thing is, is use your analytics, especially the keywords. Uh, this, uh, you, you know what your keywords are in your industry. You can search them, you can find them on Google, you can figure out what's gonna drive traffic to you. So with that said, I'd like to move into how I think about our business and kind of jump back to um, some of those first things I was talking about, increase the number of customers, increase the, uh, the frequency of their visits, and increase the number of items that they're purchasing. Uh, I monitor myself approximately 250 metrics every single day. Now obviously I can't go through and look at all that. Uh, our, our, our data uh, group uh, spits it out, they stick it in the spreadsheet, and then I build the spreadsheet and keep uh, looking at it. And I'm gonna walk you through some of the tools that we've built over the years just so we can look at a lot of data quickly. Um, so this is, uh, this particular page here is all the various uh, uh, um, top uh, categories that we monitor. In fact, revenue, obviously, we all look at revenue. And by the way, I've randomly put numbers in here. Uh, uh, I, wish, I wish these were the numbers, just kidding. Um, the, <laughs> So, uh, and this is from uh, years ago, any, uh, from like 2006, I believe. I just grabbed some numbers and uh, changed them a little. But uh, we have subscriptions, uh, our what, primo money. This is our highest level membership is called primo members. And our three key drivers are traffic, members, and revenue, obviously. So I have to look at those three key things every day. So the different types of memberships we have, and we can just scan this quickly. Now, we wanna look at it in different ways. So for example, on this particular day, we had 5,600 visitors to our site. 
And this spreadsheet, I honestly have been working on for over 20 years uh, because I needed something that I could understand and I could uh, analyze. Uh, and I could look at a lot of data quickly. So in this case, this first column is the actual number. If it's dark green, or this color green, that means it's in the top 1% of all days that I've ever, uh, that the company's ever existed. So, so for example, there's 240 or 2,041 days. It's probably one of the top 20 days or top 25 days that we've been in business. Uh, right next to it, I have uh, what we did the previous year, uh, just so I can compare it. Then I, had, uh, then I have what's called a seven-day average. And the reason I do that is sometimes when you are looking at numbers, it's really hard to see a trend when you're looking at something like this. It's really kind of difficult. So I, look at, I have a seven-day average that we look at in real time. And again, all of these little boxes up here on the screen are color-coded depending on how well we did that day, depending on the category. So in this case, uh, this is a gray box. That means we're in the top 3% for seven-day averages ever. Um, then we look at, uh, well, the, this is seven days average the previous year. Uh, I also have a 30-day average, because sometimes even the seven day is hard to see a trend. So you come over here and you, uh, we look at this and we can see the trend. It looks like at this period in time, uh, we had a pretty good run going on, but uh, we dropped off a little here right at the end. So I was probably at this point getting a little nervous because without the traffic, without the visitors, uh, member counts start dropping and revenue starts dropping. So usually I start getting nervous after about five or six days because we have to keep that traffic go going north. That's our number one driver of, of ultimately revenue. Uh, the next column over is simply 90 day average. And at this period in time, you can see that uh, it's green. We were having a pretty good run there. Every single day was setting a new 90-day record. Um, I wish that was the case since the beginning of the company. That isn't how it works, but in this, this uh, particular case. Uh, and then this is the one-year average. Uh, we look at what, what were we averaging per day for a year, and that was about uh, 4,000 visitors a day. It's still not enough. It's still not enough. I'm still not sure at that point. So what I do is I, 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 um, I can compare it to the previous year. So for example, uh, we were about 2,000 visitors better than the previous year. The rank of this particular day throughout the history of the company, in this case, it was the seventh best day. So I was almost completely happy. Uh, I'd like that number to be the first best day every single day, but it doesn't work out like that. Uh, so. Um, uh, then the trailing 12-month rank, uh, the seven-day rank. Uh, so you can start seeing. Now you'll see these numbers go down, but it gives you a little more dynamic, uh, a little a better visual of what is actually happening. So in this case, uh, it looks like the 30-day average is starting to go the other wrong way, uh, and that usually is indicative of what's going to happen to the 90-day average, where it was uh, actually pretty flat here. So for a, a pretty good run during this period of time, um, you know, we, where we had a really good run here. Uh, I would probably look at that number and be okay. And say, I'm not gonna worry too much until that 30 day number starts, starts getting a little out of control. So with that said, still looking at numbers daily can really skew your perception. Uh, you, can, you can see a trend and you'll see a 15-day trend, and you'll forget that, well, there's months, and there's quarters, and there's years, and you want to make sure you take all that in consideration. So we have actually the same exact charts that we look at daily uh, for, uh, for visitors. So if you looked at visitors, weekly visitors, it doesn't look like we have that much growth going on here. Uh, so you might want to go, we might want to go to the monthlies or the dailies just to compare, just to see what's really happening. That it's, it moves so fast in web companies, and especially in uh, fast developing companies like ours, that you can get a little, um, if you don't pay attention closely to these numbers, you can go in the wrong direction and make a really stupid mistake. So that's why this is really important. Of course, we had the same week last year, two week average, four week average, and so on. So this, the eight week average, yeah, it looks like we're, uh, we're evolving, you know, we're, we're making some progress. Um, 
one of the other things I'll do um, quite often is just, uh, especially when I'm uh, talking with the staff about this, is, um, is create a different dynamic view of this. Um, so for example, let's just look at what's the bottom point here, 23, and the high point here is uh, 27. So let me just, um, I'm just going to change the axis here. And let's just do this real quick. Just so it gives you a little different uh, dynamic perspective. Oops, there. What did I do? Oh, sorry. Again, that human error. Now, let's see. Am I 22 to 27? Oh, I see what, what's going on here. Okay, so it, it can show you what's really happening. Sometimes the default within Excel or any spreadsheet or any tool you're using does not actually show you what's going on. It looks a lot flatter than what's really going on. And if the numbers are going north like this, this is the, this is the look you always show your investors too, by the way. If they're going south, then you show that. I'm oh, just kidding. I hope there's none of my investors are in here right now. Of course, we are taping this, aren't we? Huh? Bummer. God, I just screwed up. So there's another view that I look at uh, daily, uh, just a, another different angle. And by the way, I go through all this in about 20 to 30 minutes every morning. This is usually where I start out. Where are we for the month? How are we compared to the previous month? In this case, uh, at this point in time, five days into the month, we were 19% better than the, the previous month. Uh, we were 19% better than the same month the previous year. Uh, we were going to make about $108,000 that month. It was the seventh best month ever. Uh, and uh, trailing 12 months, it was the first best month. Uh, or it's the best month uh, in the last 12 months. So this allows me to go down this list here, and if I see red, I say, uh-oh. And if it's green, it's pretty good. And if it's yellow, I don't really worry too much about it. So i got to fix the red, find out what's wrong. In this case, uh, these, these, this red here, we discontinued this product. So I don't have to sweat that too much. Um, so as I go down the list here, you can see there's a whole bunch. I can just immediately zero in on what I need to uh, focus on over the next uh, uh, 24 hours to a week. Because I'm not going to change this from red to green in a day unless we have a, a great special or something like that. So, so this is just it gives you a little perspective of how you take those three bullet points I was talking about early on and really turn it into math. Because it doesn't matter what kind of web company you have, it has nothing to do with the product. It's all about the math behind the product. How much does it cost to acquire a new customer and how much are you making when that customer comes in? We know that it's about a new visitor uh, makes us about 42 cents right now. And if we can pay 10 or 20 cents to get that new visitor, we got a winner. So, and that number changes all the time. And uh, I won't get into the details of that because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a little more drawn out. And I actually have a guy we just hired recently to take that on and handle that for us because we're going to take that to a whole other level. But it's very important, uh, if I can stress one thing uh, during this whole talk, is that the, the math behind your website is probably your most critical um, could be your most critical venture uh, regarding, uh, it, it, regardless of what your product is. Um, so we also, uh, we can look at, uh, you know, visits and other things in different ways. Uh, let's go down and look at one of the things. I usually go to visits every day when I log in. And then I look at uh, page views. And, and how, how did I do on page views yesterday? Uh, page views for us is about a $10 CPM. So for, if we have a million page views a month and we run one ad, then we make $10,000 on that. If we run two ads, we make $20,000. So you're thinking, why don't you run 10 ads? Well, then you don't get the page views. <laughs> so there's, a, there's a, a real fine line that you have to be careful you don't cross. Because customers, especially our customers, musicians, do not want to see a page full of ads. Uh, so we run one ad. What we've also found out is our ads for our own products are much more effective than, than selling our ads. We make more money and generate more revenue by running ads for our own products than we do by being paid by somebody from the outside. 
So we didn't learn that until uh, just a few years ago. We still, t we still take outside ads, but the price is uh, uh, pretty steep at this point. Um, just another way to look at the same data. Um, I, uh, I like to rank things. I like to know where I stand. Uh, and if um, it really gives me a perspective on where we are at this moment in time. This is just the data going north and south. And simply, I can scroll right and left and just see where we are, where we were this month, last month. Um, in this case, we had the, uh, the primo submission dollars. We were number one in our history. Last month, we were or in the last 12 months, and the rank last month was number one. So that's what I like to see is three ones in that column. That means we're doing well. And if that continues on over and over again, uh, then it, it starts to, um, you start worrying about other things rather than, uh, than uh, traffic and revenue. So as I go right here, we can do the same thing for quarterly uh, results and uh, yearly. Uh, it's the same, same uh, type of spreadsheet. The one that's real key and helps us externally is uh, the, uh, uh, oh, the correlation sheet here, where we can look at and immediately say, well, let's look at we have uh, uh, what's our revenue uh, versus returning visitors, and then it gives me a, a percentage. And I can look at that. I can, I can say, what are my new visitors versus new signups? Uh, and right now, we convert about 1.8% of every new visitor that comes to our site, we convert to a member. Once they become a member, then it's our job to generate revenue from that member. So it's a very simple process for us. Uh, and when I say it's simple, uh, it, it, that it's simple, but there's 250 bits of data that we look at every day to make it simple. But we have to keep going back to those three points. You can get really sidetracked here and say, well, this isn't doing well. Well, something that is generating twice as much revenue is doing twice as better, then that's okay that that's not doing well. If they're competing, like two memberships are competing with each other, or two t products are competing. If the product that's generating the most profit is doing better, then that's okay. So that's basically, that's, that's how we think about um, uh, our business. Um, I'll jump back into the PowerPoint quickly here. I know I got just a couple more minutes if I, right? Um, so just to summarize uh, what I've talked about today is understand your technology and utilize it to your advantage. If it's not your cup of tea, find somebody else because there's so many websites out there that are just ineffective. A friend builds them it, uh, and, and they're not optimized for uh, uh, search engines. It's really, really important. Even if you're not selling anything on your site, it's important to be found. Whether you're in the music business or the medical business, the biotech business, it doesn't matter. You want to be discovered. A friend of mine was telling me in, uh, just about two hours ago, and I can't elaborate too much on the product, but he wrote a book on um, a famous band and a member of that band that was kicked out years ago, and he's the only one that's ever written a book on it. His daughter, who is an SEO, the book isn't even out yet. His daughter, who is an SEO expert, has been positioning this book for about a month. Yesterday, he got a call from a huge Hollywood studio offering to buy the book rights and the, uh, uh, the film rights for a book that isn't even edited yet. It's in the editor's hands. And that's because of SEO. And I, I can't elaborate much more, but it is, uh, it it's, could be something very big for him. It could be retirement for him. And <laughs> uh, damn, I wish I had written that one. Um, I'd, have, I'd be on that boat right now. Uh, so, so utilize the technology your van your advantage. And, and there are plenty of firms that are low cost that can help you if you can't get it yourself. Build and expand your SEO and your keywords. And, and, and um, again, uh, Guys like Tim Gill, who are just experts in this area, are, are you know there's plenty of them in this town that you can go to. Uh, run the company on an aglet. I didn't mention this, but you know you hear the the the, um, uh, the comment. I run my company on a shoestring. I don't. I run it on an aglet. That's that little plastic tip at the end of the shoestring. Um, by the way, that's humor too. I'll just tell you again. But uh, I uh, I look. I sign every check that goes out the door, especially in small companies. You've got to sign every check. If you don't see the checks going out the door, you don't know how much money you're spending. Um, and then get someone to do the legal stuff. I, I should have put, made it a little more formal up there. Um, 
Uh, and remember, customers re remember if a product is good or bad. They don't remember if it's late or early. Uh, monitor your data in real time and increase the customers, the frequency, and the items. That's the key, I think, to uh, any successful business. And with that said, I thank you for your time, and I'll take questions.